All right. My name is Julia Ray. Hi, I'm Mariah Burka. Hi, I'm Samantha Lee. My name is Catherine Ramia Johnson. I go by Cat. My name is John Callis. Where do you live right now? I live in New York. Because I grew up here in New York City. In New York City. I do live in New York. I currently live in New York. How do you relate to the climate crisis? Oh, gosh, it um, really stresses me out. Um, climate crisis has been sort of something that's that's been on on my mind. I feel like I <laughs> relate to it very deeply in the sense where I would like to have a future. Uh, I feel like I don't have a huge knowledge. I, I haven't done a lot of reading, a lot of watching revolving around the climate crisis, but... How much do you know about the climate crisis in New York? Um, I don't know. I guess about New York specifically. Um, mm-hmm. I guess I haven't done a lot of research based specifically on this city. I mean, I am aware that we are on an island <laughs> and that if water levels continue to rise, we will have a problem very quickly. In New York specifically, um, not quite as much. In New York, um, honestly not that much then. So I'm not the most well-versed? Yeah, I feel like I don't know a lot about specifically New York. So who do you think, in your experience and opinion, should take accountability for the climate crisis? I mean, I think who should? I mean, we're talking you know, the Fortune 500. I mean, I feel like everyone should. And I think that there's no action that's too small. Um, I think to a certain extent, we all do. Uh, Billionaires, you know, Bill Gates. You know what I think is really funny is how lately Bill Gates has been like the face of like fighting climate change and all of that even though he is like one of the major instigators of it. Fun fact, Bill Gates is, I think, one of, if not the, um, he, 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 I think, owns the most private farmland in America. But you never hear about that when he's like, we're going to invent 50,000 new technologies to like fix the climate when all you really need to do is stop ruthlessly exploiting the earth. New research, new predictions uh, for New York City by clients, climate scientists have shown that parts of New York, including parts of Manhattan, will be underwater uh, within the next 10 years, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, And New Yorkers alone produce 12,000 tons of just trash every single day, which to put into perspective is 12,000 cars, so that's, you know, a small mountain. Um, And of that trash, New Yorkers recycle 17% of it, but of that 17%, what actually gets recycled and goes through, you know, like the magic recycling process is 8.4%. So 91.6% of everything that's recycled in New York doesn't get recycled. So essentially, New Yorkers are contributing a small mountain to landfill every single day. It, it puts to question, like, how unsustainable the city is. And so New York is underwater. Who do you think takes accountability for that? Yeah, whoa, that's scary. Whoa, yeah. 10 years. Yeah, I do think we as a city have a... We have a waste problem, and we also... We, we're at the edge of of the ocean crisis you know like that we are we are what's going to go first when the water levels start start rising you know drastically we we are what's going to go first but i think there's enough money and enough power concentrated in new york city that they will build seawalls and they will just continue to push off the problem of of water levels rising um i think I mean, they're not going to let million dollar properties go underwater. Wow, that's crazy. I think of like 
the Superman movie where like California is going to go underwater and they're like talking about it and people joke about California going underwater. I haven't heard about New York. Um, that's yeah. really scary. Faults of um, the people at the top for um, kind of creating an environment in which such levels of consumption and waste are not even just approved but expected. And I think that that idea that efficiency means producing as much as possible is one of the like core roots of the climate crisis altogether because like that's just such a ridiculous idea like the indigenous people knew very well how to farm more they just understood that they only needed 10 tomatoes a day and so they would only grow 10 tomatoes a day when you're talking about an entire population of people that really don't know what they're doing in terms of recycling. I mean, the number of things, even in my house, that I've pulled out of the recycling, and I'm like, dude, there's no way this, you know, like, there's no way this is going to be recycled. Change just the culture of consumption. Not to be like, the root of all evil is capitalism, but you can, there's a very direct line from capital production and expansion, and imperial expansion to a climate crisis a food crisis. In general, I think consumers just need to consume less, and that's like a whole mindset shift that I think Americans need to have. It's a mass, massive problem, but it's also requires a massive solution. Right, the big businesses are catering to what they think we want. So if we don't demand, you know, less consumption and less production, then they're not going to do that. Like, how have we been raised and socialized to consider food this extremely expendable thing when actually it's this thing that a lot of labor is put into to yield that crop from the earth and to put it together. At the end of the day, it needs to be like a entire industry, like government functioning shift. I've had conversations with people about using single use plastic, about using plastic utensils, about recycling, where some people have expressed to me that they don't think it really matters because it's such a small percentage of what actually affects the climate crisis. Like there's so many like big corporations, bigger entities that are affecting climate change more than like an individual. But to me, I'm like, if I if I can change any anything, make any small sacrifice to help, then why wouldn't I? And so I think that we we can't like, you know, be these really like ignorant people who are saying, oh, this is just the plight of humanity who is like inevitably greedy and evil and is gonna take and take and whatever. Like that's not true because most people in this world had much, much more healthy relationships with the land up until like 700 years ago. Um, And yeah, so.